in this video series, we will be looking at the last conic section, which is called a hyperbola. So the first thing we're going to do is define a hyperbola. Uh, hyperbola is defined as the set of all points such that the absolute value of the difference from any point on the hyperbola to two given points called the foci is constant. So let's use the image below to help us understand this definition. We have here station one and station two on some water, and we're looking at these being our foci. What the definition of a hyperbola says that if you were to pick any random point on the hyperbola, so let's pick a random point, we'll just do right up here. If I were to measure the distance from this focus to the point on the hyperbola, and we'll call that then D1, and I were to go from that point on the hyperbola to the focus on the other side, we're to call that D2. The absolute value of their difference, so d1 minus d2, is going to be constant. And what it means constant is if you were to pick another random point on the hyperbola, and so I could pick one down here, and I were to find the distance from, again, this focus to that point, we'll call that d3, or distance 3. And then from that point to the other focus, and again, we'll call that one D4, the absolute value of their difference is going to be the same as the absolute value of the difference from D1 and D2. So that's the formal definition of a hyperbola for. And so we can just see what that means is that any point, the distance, from the focus to that point and from that point to the focus, the difference of that distance is going to be constant no matter where you're at on the graph, no matter what point you pick on the graph. So let's look at the graph of a hyperbola. So we see here it looks very complicated. You can just imagine this box not being here, though, for it and we can just take a look at all the parts and we'll look at the formulas for each part later but I want you to kind of make the connection to understand the concept of this whole shape this whole graph you notice that it looks like everything you have a you have b you have c we had those also with the ellipses so let's keep that in mind but they're all stemming from this point right here that point is called your center and so this point, your center, is still based off of knowing your h and k values. So that's not new that your center is hk. So at least we have that now. We now know how hk is going to come into play. But let's take a look at the, our a value first. Our a value comes from the center, and it ends at this point on the hyperbola and we can even do it over here it ends on this point on the hyperbola well those points are your vertices and so we can even see here that our vertices are going to be on this graph a units from the center for it and this is a horizontal hyperbola and we notice that our focus on the right and our focus on the left are C units from the center. So we're also going to have a foci for our graph that we're going to have to find. And now we're looking at, well, we have our dashed lines. We have asymptotes now. And so we're also going to have to find our asymptotes. The way and the key to finding the asymptotes are based off of understanding just plain old linear graphs. Linear graphs have a constant rate of change. We refer to it as a slope. So if I were to think about this asymptote, and we'll do the one that has a positive slope, 
you were going to pick two random points on it. Here's one, the center. I had to pick another one for it. It could be right here on the corner of that box. And if I were to imagine the slope, think of it like rise over run. You're going up B units. You're going to the right A units. You're to do the negative one. You're going down B units, and you're going to the right A units. So our asymptotes are going to have a slope that we're going to need to find. And the good news is the slope is based off of your A and B values. Your foci are based off of your C values for this. Your vertices are based off the distance from the center to each vertex for it, depending on the opening of your graph. We see that the distance from vertex to our center is A units. So it's based off the A value. So it's not completely complicated. It's very similar to how we did our ellipses. The distance from the center to the vertices is A units. No different for hyperbola. Distance from the center of the foci is C units. No different on a hyperbola. The new concept is that your curve for the hyperbola now is not going to be parabolic in shape. It's going to approach some asymptotes for it. And so we need to find those asymptotes. And the way you do that is by finding the slope, which is based off of your A and B values. And we can actually dive deeper into this by looking at the concept to make it very easy to do. So let's look at all of our equations since we kind of went through them, what each value works with. If your center of the hyperbola will be located at HK, we have two different forms for this. The one on the left is a horizontal hyperbola. The one on the right is a vertical hyperbola. Now, we're going to do both of these at the same time. One way to know which one's horizontal, which one's vertical, is look at which variable comes first. The x comes first, and then the minus the y, then it's going to be horizontal. If you have the y first minus the x, it's going to be vertical. y is your vertical, x is your horizontal. Now, the foci, again, understand the concepts in order to understand the formulas. Yes, all the formulas will be given to you, but just because you're given a formula doesn't mean you can use it. You have to understand the meaning behind it. And so the distance from the center to the foci is C units. So the focus on each side is located C units from the center. And the reason why that's important is because if it's horizontal, if the hyperbola is horizontal, then your, your focus on each side is going to be left and right. And so that's why C is being added and subtracted from the H value. It's because your focus on the, is going to be to the left and going to be to the right. And for vertical, since it's opening up and down, now your focus will be up and down. So you're adding and subtracting C from the K. Your vertices are A units from the center. And for hyperbola, you only have two vertices for it. And so the shape of it, if your A units from the center and it's going to be a horizontal, then that means you're going left and right A units. So that's why it's H plus or minus A for the vertices for a horizontal. Well, if it's vertical, you're going up and down. And so that's why A is being added and subtracted from K is because K is your vertical movement. Covertices, which the covertices are used to help us identify our slope for it. Covertices are B units from the center. And so that's going to be the opposite of our vertices for it. It's going to be K plus or minus B and H plus or minus B for it. The equations, the asymptotes we see below, this is written in point slope form for us. Um, we're just going to focus on the slopes of them. And so let's talk about the slopes. If we think about this being a horizontal hyperbola, and I'll just draw a little sketch, not to scale, not anything unique for it. And we want to identify our slopes 
of it. You notice on 1 that it's b minus, sorry, plus or minus b over a, and 1 plus or minus a over b. There's an easy way to remember which one goes to which. And again, it's all about the concepts when it comes to conic sections. Slope is basic definition you've learned is rise over run. So if I have a horizontal hyperbola here, the distance from the center to one of the vertices is going to be a units. So you're going left to right. Well, is that a rise or is that a run? Well, that's a run if you're going left to right. And so if you think about your co-vertices here, here for it, the distance from the center to the co-vertices is B units. Is that a rise or is that a run? And that's a rise. So plus or minus B over A for a horizontal. If we were to think about a vertical for it, all you need to understand is what does A represent? Does it represent left to right movement? Does it represent a run? Or does it represent a up or down movement, which is a rise? So same idea if you were to just do the graphs with the asymptotes. Again, this is not drawn to scale, just as a sketch. Here's our center. Well, now our A, the distance from the center to the vertices, that's a rise now. And our B, the distance from the center to the co-vertices, that's a run. So that's why the slopes are the way they are, is you have to go back to the basic definition of slope, which is rise over run. My personal opinion is just look at A, because you already know A from vertices. You already know it's a left or right movement because it's attached to your H. Your vertices are on the horizontal here, that's left or right, so that's a run. If you know that A is your run, it's on the bottom of the fraction, it's in the denominator, then B has to be in the top process of elimination there. Same thing here. A is a vertical movement for your vertices, so that's a rise. So that means A will be in the numerator of the slope, and B has to be in the denominator then. So understand the concept behind the slopes. This is just an introduction to everything. We have yet to even graph and try them. But it's all about understanding the concepts of each formula, the reason why each formula is the way it is, and understand it so that way you can use it.